What's going on? I'm John, and in this writing vlog, I'm going to be outlining the sequel to my first epic fantasy novel. And because with the Novelist Apprenticeship Challenge, I only have three months per book, I need to finish the outlining, writing, and story level revision in just two months. And to make that happen, I'm aiming to finish the outlining in just two weeks. So, let's begin. Last time I was doing this outlining process, I missed out on one thing that I think would have helped me a lot, and that is free writing beforehand. Trying to brainstorm, trying to figure out various scenes that might be in this character's story, and just getting an idea of what this character's story is going to look like before I even try to figure out the various beats of the story. And I think because I didn't do this, it made the process slower for me, where I had to brainstorm at each of the individual steps, rather than having an idea for what the scenes were already going to be, and then just plugging them into the different beats. So I'm going to start this outlining by doing some free writing and to help me do that I'm actually going to be referring to another book by Cam Wayland. This is a book outlining your novel and I remember when I was reading through it the first time that she had this section on how she does her brainstorming before she's writing novels. So I'm going to try and follow along with that and hopefully it'll give me some great ideas for where to take this novel when I get deeper into the outlining process. So I've read through and now I have some ideas about where I want to go with this actual writing. I think that what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to ask some what if questions for each of the characters. I know where their starting points are because of the end of the last book. However, I haven't considered that much what will happen with each of the characters after that point. So I'm going to take some time now to really focus on that. Okay, so I just spent a bunch of time thinking about what ifs for each of the characters, like what might happen in the story, what if this happened, what if that happened, how would that affect things, and then also I spent some time thinking about what is expected. What might readers expect given what has happened in the stories so far, and how can I potentially turn that on its head? So I've come up with quite a few ideas, and some of them were actually pretty awesome. One of them in particular, when I thought of the idea, my mouth went... So just to make sure that I'm getting the most of this process, what I'm going to do now is look through all of these what ifs and select the ones that I think are the most interesting and then try to pursue them a little bit further and think about if that happened, then what else might happen and kind of follow them to their logical conclusion and see if I can come up with even more cool ideas for the story from those. So I just went through for each of these things that I thought was interesting and elaborated a little bit more on it to try and figure out how I could make it even more interesting. So I have made really good progress today actually. I started off the day not really sure what might happen in the story, but now I have a much more clear idea. I thought of a few ideas for really cool scenes that I'm excited to write already, and even further I've thought of ways in which these different characters arcs are going to intertwine during this book. So tomorrow I'm going to continue with some of this cursory stuff with just getting the foundations set up. I'm going to focus on coming up with that premise and then also thinking about some of the other fundamental ideas before I start the outline. And I am mostly following along with the advice given in this book so far because I think it makes a lot of sense actually and it has yielded some interesting results for me already. I'll see you tomorrow with more outlining. Full disclosure, I had trouble sleeping last night. So I am kind of tired and I'm going to try not to ramble. I'm specifically trying not to ramble because when I'm tired I ramble a lot. And what I'm focused on today is one, the premise statement, and two, something in this book that she calls pre-outline questions. Basically questions intended to help you get a better understanding of your story before you're actually starting to outline it. First, let's just start with the premise statement. So I was just thinking about this and I realized that although I did a lot of brainstorming yesterday for the POV characters, I didn't actually think about what the villain character is doing during all this time. So I think it might be good to get an idea of some possible things where that can go so that I have a better understanding of the conflict before I actually write this premise. I just finished creating the premise statement and whenever I create these premises it is always a difficult process because in an epic fantasy novel when you're writing with multiple POV characters 
the stories can get pretty complicated as you might expect and to really write an effective premise you have to focus on just one character being the lead for the story so i have decided that lucian is going to take the reins in this story and it makes sense because his is going to be a really interesting arc i can't really give too much detail because the story in this book is strongly affected by the end of the previous one anyway i'm going to get into the next phase which is answering some of these pre-outlined questions So I finished going through all of these pre-outlined questions and I think that in general they're good but they weren't amazing in the sense that like any of these questions transformed my story or anything. At the start of the day I was only planning on finishing this premise and the pre-outlined questions so I'm happy that I already finished those but I still do think I could do more work even on a day like this where I'm not operating at full capacity. But anyway, I think I'm going to spend a little bit more time working on this. I would like to try to start thinking about scenes in the story and just kind of like brainstorming different ideas for scenes before I start plugging into the Save the Cat structure. And Okay, so I just wrote out all of the scenes and really not even just scenes, but all of the specific details I want to set up for Lucian's character arc. And I think it's pretty interesting. And one thing that I noticed while doing this because of the fact that Lucian and Ella's arcs are pretty intertwined in this story is that it's really useful because you have scenes that both characters are present for. You can show more scenes overall in the characters' stories for these two characters. Anyway, I just finished mapping out these scenes and to be quite honest, my brain is just not feeling right. <laughs> I'm doing an all right job, but I feel like I would do so much better if I actually had good rest. So I'm just gonna take a nice little walk and maybe that'll wake me up and I can work on this more. But if not, then I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so yesterday I had a little break day, did a little bit of rock climbing, it was fun. However, today I am back to continue with this writing and what I'm going to be focusing on here mostly is brainstorming scenes for the different characters. Last time I brainstormed scenes for Lucian and today I'm going to do that for Romana and Ella and also go into a little more depth. I'm going to read through these scene lists, make sure that there's not anything that feels rushed or feels missing and if there is then I'm going to fix those problems along the way and get really complete lists of scenes for each of these characters before I move on to the stage where I'm going to be using Save the Cat as I have done recently. So I have just finished mapping out the various scenes for both Ella and Pramana. I definitely need to do more with Ella and Lucian's characters because right now Pramana's arc is like super awesome. It is going to be really cool. I'm pretty pumped about that one but considering he's not really the protagonist of this story I feel like Lucian needs a little bit more juice in his arc. So what I'm going to do next here is go through these various lists of scenes and I'm going to just read through and try to find things that don't feel so right and then try and brainstorm what I can do to fix those areas. So I just worked through fixing up the maps for the scenes and I made Lucian's arc as well as Ella's because those two are tied together a little bit more interesting and I gave them an ending that's going to suggest a little more progress. So now that I'm done fixing up these various scene lists, I'm going to get started on actually plotting out the stories for these characters. As far as I'm anticipating it right now, only Lucian is going to have a growth arc and Pramana and Ella are both going to stay with flat arcs. But unfortunately for me, that means that I have to plot out two different flat arcs and I've never plotted out a flat arc before. So I'm going to be using the character arcs book that I referred to in the past to try to figure out the flat arc for these characters. First though, let's just start off with Lucian because he has the positive growth arc. He has an arc that I'm very familiar with and that I can literally just use to save the cat to figure out, which will make things simple for me to start with. So I was just getting started on thinking about Lucian's character arc. And of course, I realized that I needed to think about the things that he's going to be struggling with at the beginning of the story and kind of like the fundamentals of the growth arc. Like what is the flaw that he has right now? What is the lie that he believes? What is holding him back? And how is he going 
to overcome it through this story. So I'm just going to work through some of these exercises in the beginning of Save the Cat and trying to figure out the details for this character to have this positive growth arc. And obviously I already have a lot of understanding of him as a character, but with the changing things in his life, he's having to face different problems and I anticipate that these new problems are bringing out different flaws that he might not have had to confront yet. So as I'm working through these questions here, I'm realizing that Lucian's flaw is not feeling congruent with who he was as a character in the previous book. Long story short, I need to figure that out. Okay, so I just finished figuring out Lucian's flaw, what he wants, and what he needs in the story. A few minutes ago, I was trying to pursue a different flaw, and I thought that that one might work for the story, but as I said, it didn't feel congruent with the character, so I was looking through and trying to find different ones, and I found one that works much better. It stems exactly from how he was acting in the previous book, and the consequences of what happened at the end of the previous book. So this one is going to be so much better, and I'm getting really excited about being able to write Lucian's story now because of figuring out this piece. Yesterday, I brainstormed a lot of scenes for Ella, for Mana, and I also spent some time figuring out the start of the growth arc for Lucian in this book. And now that I've got that foundation set, I'm ready to start actually plotting out Lucian's story. So I'm going to be going through trying to use Save the Cat again. I'm not sure that the genres are going to fit perfectly, but I'll see if I can find something that works. Oh, and also, I forgot to mention this before, but my goal for the day is to get to the midpoint. I got a lot of work cut out for me. <laughs> So I was just checking through the genres again. The main ones that popped out as potential genres were the Rites of Passage, the Golden Fleece, and the Dude with the Problem. But the Dude with the Problem and Golden Fleece didn't really fit for various reasons. I think the Rites of Passage could potentially work. The only thing is that it's not such a universal struggle as like death or adolescence or anything like that. I might be able to include those elements in this story. But anyway, I know enough to get started on the actual plotting now. So let's get into it. So I worked through the opening image and the theme stated and the setup. However, right now I'm really having trouble with the catalyst. And here's the reason why. The way that Lucian's story is working out, it feels like he's more propelled by what happened at the end of the last book than any sort of event that's happening here in the catalyst. It seems like it's kind of a straight line from the events that ended the last book to the break into two. But if that's the case, then what's the point of the catalyst? What is the catalyst actually doing? So I'm trying to do a little bit of research and figure this out and hopefully get some ideas about how to get a good catalyst going here. I think I honestly just need to brainstorm a little bit more about this catalyst. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go on my run early today. That will allow me to take some time to let my brain work through this stuff to give my subconscious a little bit of time to figure out some ideas for this because sitting here right now and trying to rack my brain isn't necessarily coming up with anything so far. So I'm going to go do that run and hopefully I'll have some good ideas while I'm doing it. Okay, so I just got back from my run and I came up with so many good ideas while I was out there. I think I know how things are going to work. Basically, the problem that I was having before I left for my run is that I didn't really know where to begin the story and the place I had decided to begin it made the catalyst very difficult to decide on. So when I was on my run, I figured out a different place further down the timeline to start the story. And by doing that, it made the catalyst much more natural and then also the break into two much more natural. But I didn't just figure out those things while I was on my run. I really brainstormed the heck out of Lucian's arc. First of all, I thought of a really cool thing that could happen at the midpoint. A false defeat that could be super interesting for both Ella and Lucian. That would cause them to have to split up again. And that would later on allow Lucian to demonstrate that he's learned the lesson of the story in a very 
direct sort of way. I also thought of a all is lost for Lucian, a finale for Lucian, and a high tower surprise for Lucian as well, all while I was on this run. I highly recommend it. Basically what you do is you're running along and you prompt your mind with some sort of what if question like, well, what if this happens, then what would that mean for the story? And you kind of just follow those threads. And if you lose track of what you were thinking about, you just return your mind back to the prompt again, and you just keep returning back to that prompt until you get the ideas that you need. And I find, at least for me, while I'm running, my mind is in a very relaxed state. I have this natural inclination to just be thinking and it feels very meditative already. So because I'm in this creative state, it's so easy to get amazing ideas. I highly recommend you try it out if you've never done this. Anyway, now that I've figured out all this amazing stuff for my story, I think it should be pretty smooth sailing to get to the midpoint, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished outlining all the way up to the midpoint and including the midpoint itself. It was very helpful that I did that brainstorming while I was running because it was much easier to actually write this with a lot of the story figured out beforehand. I'm feeling good about the way Lucian's arc is going and I think that Ella's is going to be very solid too because of what I figured out while I was doing that run. That's all for the writing today. I am going to do a little bit of reading. I am about to finish The Wise Man's Fear. So after that, I'm going to start on a new book. I have a bunch of books that I'm potentially going to be reading next. I'm not sure which one I'm going to go with. The Rhythm of War, The Lies of Locke Lamora, and Before They Are Hanged, the second book in the first Lost series. So who knows what's going to come next? I don't. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. So yesterday I worked up all the way to the midpoint in outlining Lucian's arc, and today I'm going to finish the rest of the arc, all the way from the bad guy's close in to the closing image. And also, I forgot to outline the theme stated, so I have to sneak that one in there too. So let's get started. Okay, so I just outlined all the way through the bad guy's close in definitely one of the harder beats to outline because it's so broad and so many different things could happen. For now, I'm going to move on and continue with plotting out some of the most important scenes of the entire story. Okay, so believe it or not, I have just finished outlining the entire story. I already worked all the way to the closing image. So, it's going good today. I did some really good work. Since I finished earlier here today, I do want to take another look at this story and make sure that overall it looks good. However, what I'm going to do first is take a little bit of a break. I'm going to go do my exercise early today again. And during that time, I will be able to think through some of these issues again and make sure this is really solid before I continue with this story as is. Okay, so I just got back from my exercise, took a little bit of a shower, and now I'm ready to get back into outlining. And one positive thing that came out of this exercise is that I realized rather than just trying to review the stuff that I've outlined so far, what might be more useful is to actually start outlining scenes in Plotter and trying to see how what I've outlined here actually maps itself over to Plotter. And in doing that, I'll have made sure this is a solid story and be ready to start writing it. This is probably gonna take a while, but I do wanna finish this today so that I can start working on Ella and then Permana's arcs after this. Okay, so there is one character who I haven't named who is a pretty major character and to avoid the problems that I had last time with unnamed characters, I'm just gonna go ahead and name him real quick. I'm making good progress overall so far. I've gotten up to the B story, so I'm pretty far along for this plotting out. Let's name this guy and then let's continue plotting. Okay, so I just finished going through and outlining all of these scenes and plugging them into Plotter. I also, for now, 
put in the templates at least for Pramana and for Ella. I also put in some space for Lucian's backstory scenes. I only have one of the backstory scenes I actually thought of a little bit so far, but I'm going to include more later on. So with that done, I have finished quite a bit of work today. I was actually only planning on finishing the cursory plotting, going through the Save the Cat, and figuring out how the various beats were going to work out. I had not even considered the possibility of going in and adding all these scenes to Plotter and making them actual scenes. So I'm very happy to have taken the time to do that, and now I'm going to be able to get started on plotting up Ella's arc tomorrow. Okay, so yesterday I finished outlining Lucian's arc, the positive growth arc in the story. And that means that today it's time to start on one of the flat arcs. And since I've never even outlined a flat arc before, I don't really understand them that well. It is going to be much more difficult. So what I want to do is go through this book on character arcs that I mentioned many times before answer the questions about the flat arc that are guiding the different parts of the story and then use those to kind of plug it in to save the cat in a sense. I'm still trying to use save the cat because I think the pacing is going to be useful for me. However, what I anticipate I'm going to do is just ignore the stuff that they mention about the B story and just keep it all focused on the A story and the pacing rather than using save the cat to create that sort of transformation. Okay, so I just finished up answering all of these questions, going through all of the questions related to the flat arc in this book about creating character arcs. I do think these questions were useful, at least in providing some sort of framework for the main things that I want to make sure I'm including in this story and helping me focus on thinking about those things. So now that I've got that, I'm going to focus on going through the Save the Cat beats and include some of the answers to these questions rather than the B story elements. So I've already made a ton more progress than I thought I was going to make today. I was initially planning only to go through the exercises from that book and answering those questions, but now I've already made it up to the fun and games and I'm starting to outline some of the scenes for this part of the story. I think that I'm going to call it up for the midpoint and give myself some time for my subconscious to work through this regardless, because I do want to make sure that I'm making this story as good as it can be, and I don't want to try to rush through just to get something down on the page. Okay, so I just finished outlining all the way up through the midpoint, and this was definitely difficult. It was definitely different than doing a normal positive growth arc. I feel so much more comfortable with that because, you know, I've done it so many times. But even so, I do think that this overall still makes sense. It's just more difficult for me to envision this sort of arc. And I think maybe the best thing that I can do is actually just plot out Ella's pretty quickly, not focus on making it absolutely perfect, and then try to plot out Pramana's as well, just to get a better understanding of using the flat arc and more experience using it, and potentially be able to improve both of those arcs afterward. So anyway, I'm going to call it here for now. I'm going to go do some swimming, and if I come up with some ideas, I might be back to tell you about them. If not, then I'll see you tomorrow. Hello. I did not anticipate to be talking tonight. However, I wanted to take a second to talk to you all because... Today, unfortunately, I seem to have pulled a muscle in my lower back, so I am not really in the best condition right now. Even sitting is not ideal. I'm not sure what's going to happen tomorrow, but I may or may not have to take tomorrow off, which means that I have less time to work on this outlining, but I'm still going to get it done either way. I just need a little break first. <laughs> Hopefully, when I'm fully recovered, I'll be able to crush it. As I mentioned yesterday, I did end up hurting my back yesterday and it still doesn't feel normal. However, it feels all right. And so part of me is tempted to continue working at least a little bit here because if I take an hour or so here, I can probably get through the rest of the outline for Ella. And then after a long break, maybe I will come back to it with some fresh eyes and have some new ideas, potentially ways to make it even better. I don't think it will take that long and I don't like resting. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't like not doing work. And if I only spend like an hour or something on it and get some stuff done, I can feel good about that. And the fact that I pushed myself, even when I wasn't feeling, you know, up to it. I just like working, man. <laughs> Let's just get started for a little bit and we'll see how long I can work for. So it's been about an hour and I managed to get through the rest of the story. I did not put in my usual level of attention to detail here, but I just wanted to get something down to get me started at least in the right direction. So I think I'm going to stop here, despite the fact <laughs> that I would like to continue working for at least a few more hours. I'm gonna start on my break and try to focus on actually laying down instead of sitting up in a chair. Because I'm going to get a nice amount of time away from this after my rest, I should be able to see it with pretty fresh eyes. And hopefully if there are any problems with this or any things I don't like about it, I can improve on it then. So I tried to work laying down to see if it would help, to see if I'd be able to work for longer periods like this, but actually that posture supporting the computer on my legs felt really similar to the way my back feels when I'm sitting down. And to make matters worse, I got poor sleep waking up at 2.30 in the morning after falling asleep probably after 9. My brain was not in a great state anyway, so I decided that I was just gonna focus on resting and hopefully feel better tomorrow. Today, it does definitely feel better. I mean, saying that, my back is getting annoyed having to sit already for, you know, an hour today. But that's fine. I'm going to push myself a little bit harder than I have been in the last few days. And then after that, I'm just going to lay down the whole rest of the day. <laughs> so. I'm gonna make this work somehow because I am running out of time here and I really want to get this done, man. I want to crush this. I want to figure out an arc that actually works for Ella that doesn't feel flat at the Ella's loss because it's just not a big enough loss. So let's start with that. Let's start by brainstorming how I can make Ella's Ella's loss better, how I can make her character arc better in general, and try to figure some things out. So because of the way the story was set up, I realized that the All is Lost that I was already planning on does have a component of making her life worse than it was even at the beginning of the story. But I needed to think about things I could stress during the scene that would actually show how her situation is worse. And now I'm going to fix up the other beats toward the end here that stem from this All is Lost moment, make sure all of them are working with it, and then I should be done with the actual rough outlining of Ella. I'm back here in my room because I was trying to work over there and I really, really want to do a full day's worth of work already, but when I'm over there, when I'm trying to sit up, I can feel things flaring up again. And I know it's not going to be good for me in the long term, for me actually being able to work on this story over the next few days to push it too far basically with forcing myself to sit for long periods of time to actually get work done. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it here even though I really wanted to continue working for longer. Even though I hate not being able to do as much work I hate not being able to push myself every day. It makes me feel bad, but I don't know what else to do because it doesn't seem like a good idea to push myself too far and then suffer in the long term. If I can at least get a decent amount of rest and recovery and improvement, then somehow I can get through this. Somehow I can continue. This is not ideal, but I'm going to find a way to get through this somehow. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. So today my back is still feeling kind of the way it was yesterday. So it's not too much improved, but I thought about it and I think there's potentially a way that I can still get 
decent amount of writing work done. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with working on some writing activities and I'm going to work until it starts to feel not so good. And then I'm going to take a break until my back feels kind of back to normal. And then I'm going to come back and continue with the writing until I'm able to get it done. Because today I want to finish with transferring all of the scenes that I had for Ella in the more general outline to Plotter and getting them ready to actually be written. So that's what I'm gonna focus on here today and that's how I'm going to do it. And hopefully that will allow me to do this without worsening my back. So I just worked up to the break into two for Ella in transferring over my rough outline into actual scenes. My back is already starting to feel a little bit frustrated, so I'm gonna take a little break here. I'm gonna lay down and read before they were hanged, and hopefully I'll feel ready to continue writing pretty soon. Okay, so I had about a 30 minute break, and hopefully that will buy me some time to get to maybe the midpoint, or I don't know where, but to make some good progress in this outlining. Well, I actually made some good progress here. I managed to work all the way up to the all is lost scene and transferring over from the general outline to specific scene outline in Plotter. So things are going well here. However, my back is definitely starting to feel a little tired. So I'm going to take one last break and then I should be able to come back and finish up the last few scenes here. Okay, so I just finished working through all the scenes in the Dark Knight of the Soul all the way up to the closing image. So I've just finished plotting out Ella's character arc. I know exactly what I'm going to have to write for her. And now I'm ready to continue on to Pramana's. And today was also good because I figured out a way I can actually work for a decently long amount of time while still enabling myself to recover. I'm going to see how I feel the rest of the day and hopefully I'll actually continue feeling better and that will mean that this was actually a success and that I was able to use this plan to work for longer without hurting my recovery. I'll let you know about all that tomorrow. See you then. Now in these last few days I'm going to be working on Pramana's arc. This is another flat arc so I'm going to use the same process that I used to create Ella's. Oh, and back update. Right now it feels all right, although I anticipate that eventually, if I'm sitting here long enough, it's going to start hurting. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did yesterday because it seems to have worked pretty well. So today I would like to first get through all these questions for Pramana's story, and second, start working on the outline a little bit. Uh, I don't know exactly where I would like to get up to, at least to the break into two. I have three days. So I think that a fair split would be to finish the break into two here so that tomorrow I have the full rest of the general outline and then the next day I just have plugging into Plotter and coming up with the actual scenes. Through answering some of these questions for Pramana, I realized that I might have messed up one of the parts of outlining Ella's arc in talking about the truth that she believes. I think I might have centered it too much on her. I think the truth in a flat arc is more based on society rather than a single person. At least that's what it looks like from the examples that I was reading through. I didn't really have that connection earlier this week. So I might have to go back and tweak Ella's stuff a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to focus on finishing up Hermana first. So I've gotten through the question portion and I feel like I've done a decent job with these questions. Some of them I just don't feel apply that well to this character's story. Since Pramana is not joined by any specific people on his journey throughout the entire length of it, he's meeting with a few people here, he's meeting with some more people there, he's traveling with this other guy for a decent amount of time on the journey, but it's not the whole journey. So showing character transformations of the characters around him is really not something that I can do 
so easily in this story. So I did have to ignore some of the questions on that because it's just not really relevant for him. It doesn't make sense that Pramana would suddenly find some sort of ally when in the last book he was alone pursuing this journey. So I answered those questions. Now I'm ready to start outlining stuff according to the Save the Cat structure. But before I actually do that, I'm going to take a little bit of a break. My back doesn't really feel that bad yet, but I'm kind of trying to avoid it feeling bad at all. That would be amazing. And I would like to keep it in this state if I can. So let's take a nice break here. Let's read my book. And hopefully I won't even have to aggravate my back at all during this writing today. And just like that, I've outlined all the way up to the break into two. And I'm planning on outlining the rest of the story tomorrow. And if I have time, I would also like to start putting some of the, some of that story into Plotter tomorrow as well. Hopefully that will give me enough time to take another look at Ella's story a little bit more before I actually start writing and just try to see if I can make the truth part of it a little bit better. I could honestly work on plotting out a little bit more today, but as of right now my back is actually feeling reasonably good and if I let it rest, I may just be able to be back to normal before actually starting the writing of this story, which would be very valuable for me because it's going to be very difficult to finish writing this entire story if I have to take breaks for 30 minutes every so often just so I can actually function. So I'm going to stop here and hopefully when I see tomorrow I'll be feeling almost back to normal, if not completely back to normal. Okay, so here I'm back for the second to last day of outlining the sequel. I've got Two days left here, so let's do this. Today, the main thing I'm going to be focusing on is finishing up the rest of the actual general outline using the Save the Cat beats to figure out the pacing for the story and, and go through and figure out how the story is going to look overall. And then I'd like to get started at least a little bit on transferring some of the scenes I create today into Plotter and creating actual scenes from them with the three steps of the scene sequel structure detailed for each of them. I left off yesterday on the break in two for this general outline, so let's just get started working through these beats. Okay, so I just finished working through the whole general outline for Pramana, and overall I do like how it goes. I actually did introduce some other characters into the story a little bit. Still, they don't get introduced until like Fun and Games and the Midpoint, so it's really not like they're going to get to transform based on his truth very early in the story. But either way, I do think it will make it more interesting to have these characters, especially because they have differing views to him on the goal that he's going after. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way the story has turned out so far. I'm going to start plugging it in to Plotter, but before I do, I'm going to take a little break on the floor as I've been doing, laying down and letting my back rest. And after that, I should be ready to come back and move these scenes into Plotter. So I've managed to work my way through the beginning scenes, plotting them out all the way up to the break into two. I think this is where I'm going to call it here for the day. Overall, as far as like the back and that kind of stuff, it is feeling a lot better. It doesn't feel great to continue sitting here for a long amount of time. However, compared to yesterday and definitely compared to the days before, it is a lot better than it has been. So taking these breaks and not pushing myself for too long in this sitting position is helping for sure. I'm not quite back to normal today, but I think tomorrow I will be back to normal. I hope so. And I think that I should be able to finish all the rest of the stuff for this plotting. I'm gonna have to work through the rest of these scenes, of course, and I'm gonna have to figure out the structure of each of these scenes and map from the beats to these scenes. But I think think that tomorrow I should be back to normal and if that's the case then I can work for as long as I need. <laughs> What's going on? Today is the last day of outlining the sequel and I have quite a bit to do today. I need to first transfer over 75% of the book from the general outline to the actual scenes in Plotter. Second, I need to look back over Ella's arc and make sure that the truth she believes is actually being expressed throughout, as well as that it actually makes sense and think through if I like it the way it is or if I want to change it for something different that might work better. And third, it may or may not be useful for me to start thinking about the backstory scenes for Lucian. I have one so far, and I 
think it would be good for me to actually come up with the kind of story that I'm going to tell in the backstory and that would make it so that I'm actually ready to write every single part of this story come tomorrow. So that is what I'm going to be doing here today. I'm off to a little bit of a late start already because I woke up at 4.50 today. Let's just get started and let's make some progress here. Let's finish this up, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, so I worked my way all the way through the funny games, but those were actually pretty hard scenes to figure out. It took quite a while and well, I didn't talk about this yet, but my back definitely isn't back to normal. <laughs> so it is starting to feel a little bit worn out. So because of that, I think I'm just going to take a break right now and read for a little bit and I'll come back and continue working on this and keep making progress and just repeat this cycle as many times as I need in order to finish this work for the day. I just wanted to take a second to kind of let you in on what's going on here because currently I'm kind of frustrated with what is going on here. The fact that my back is still hurting, that I still need to take these breaks, and that since I didn't push myself harder on previous days, now I'm in this state where I have to work really hard today and take breaks in between and just continually do that over and over again. And I don't really want to do that. <laughs> I definitely do not. I don't like taking breaks. I'm the type of person who like, I like starting on something. I like working on it and just continuing to work on it until it's done and then moving on to the next thing. So anyway, I don't want to dwell on the negative because obviously I do want to finish this today and I'm going to finish it today regardless. It's just, I don't feel like finishing it. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyway, let's just dig into this work and let's just continue because... That's all I can do right now. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran to the no man, I still go. Okay, so I managed to work up to the break into three, but I still have a decent amount left to go. So despite the struggles that I was having emotionally with getting started on this, with really not feeling like going through this process, I have made it at least to the second break of the day. We'll see how many more it takes to get this done. Okay, so I just finished with all of Pramana's finale scenes up to the closing image. So now I've plotted out every single scene for Pramana as well. And I also looked through Ella's arc because as I told you before, I wanted to confirm that the story actually felt congruent, that the truth that she believes is coming through in the story and that it actually works. And I actually think it does. I was a little bit cautious about it after looking through some of the examples from the book on character arcs, but I do think it works and I do think it ties the whole story together. And even more so, it directly descends from the previous story and it is related to the truth that she ends up believing at the end of the first book. So all that's left for me to do next is figure out the backstory scenes for Lucian. However, before I do that, I'm definitely going to take another break. <laughs> so I already finished my reading and actually I'm getting very close to finishing before they're hanged. So that would be nice. Okay, so I just took a pretty long break and basically spent the whole time speaking Japanese. So I'm going to have to convert my brain back to English mode here for a little bit. But as I said before, I'm now going to start working on figuring out this backstory and just come up with some good backstory scenes and kind of like an arc of why he ended up having the lie that he believes in this story. Okay, so I figured out the backstory scenes, I came up with them, and I created the actual scenes for them, and I also spread them out in the story where the backstory scenes would make the most sense to go. And I think these ones really fit with the locations that I place them in. I have finished outlining the sequel to my first epic fantasy novel, and I'm definitely more used to the outlining process using the Save the Cat stuff and also using these flat arcs now. So I've learned a ton from this process, and I think that I'm gonna get even better at outlining as I do this over and over and over again. So I'm very excited to have finished this up, although as I'm saying that I'm getting slight pains in my back from sitting here, so you know, <laughs> there's pluses and there's minuses, but all in all, I'm excited that I have done this. I'm excited that I've been able to do this, and now I can actually get into the writing. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing next time. And I'm curious, how do you go about writing flat arcs? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button so that YouTube knows to share it with other writers like you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. 
In this writing vlog, I'm going to be outlining the sequel to my first epic fantasy novel. And my charger cord just fell on the floor. Ow. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't feel good to sit up for so long, but I got through it anyway today. I did it, and I will see you soon. 